Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to another session of uh, Edugo AI webinar. Um, my name is uh, Giuseppe Tomasello. And uh, in the meantime, we're waiting people to join. I would like to ask you if you can drop in the chat box where you guys are connected from. Because uh, my uh, intuition is that we are very international today. So we would like to have uh, just a picture of uh, where you guys are from. Uh, okay, I can see already Alfredo from Tampa, uh, Rosie from uh, Amersfoort. <laughs> Sorry if I mispronounced. Okay, Netherlands. Francesca from Italy, Akbar from Rihad, uh, Kati from Brussels. Uh, David, uh, hello uh, from Madrid uh, and also Mexico. Okay, wow, we are very international actually. So, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, depending on uh, where you guys are connected from. I can see we are uh, literally from uh, all over the world, different time zones. Um, I'm uh, right now connected from Italy, and uh, I'm Italian and just uh, come back home for uh, the Christmas uh, period. Uh, but uh, usually I'm uh, based in uh, in Dubai, in the Emirates. Okay, so we can uh, get started. I think uh, already we have uh, many people joining and in the meantime, other people uh, continue to join. I would like to ask you actually if you can uh, mute uh, your microphone for now. Uh, we will have uh, at the time for the Q&A at the end. So we will have hopefully time to do some interaction uh, because actually the topic today is a very um, interesting topic and also is a topic that can be uh, a little bit controversial. So I know, especially in the community of language teachers and language school um, uh, owners, uh, there is a, a lot of curiosity, but also some fear about the what uh, um, artificial intelligence can do. And uh, and so I hope at the end um, of this webinar, we can open up also a discussion and uh, what will be about what will be the future of uh, AI in the language education industry. So I will start by sharing my screen so we can uh, kick off with uh, the presentation. And uh, so uh, I prepared this uh, presentation today. Uh, and there is about, uh, um, so the title of the webinar is uh, Harnessing um, Generative AI to Supercharge Language Education. And uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, my background is, um, you know, I have, uh, actually I studied engineering and also uh, business. Um, I, I have a triple master degree from uh, Italy, uh, France, and China. <laughs> and so I started Edugo AI when I was in China and um, in uh, Shanghai, which uh, at the time was one of the main uh, places for uh, uh, language education, because of course the Chinese uh, market is very big and full of people who want to learn uh, languages. And uh, Shanghai was the home of uh, a lot of very innovative uh, uh, startups and also big uh, companies in the language education space. So it was an amazing time, an amazing ecosystem to start the company. And uh, together with Edugo, I also co-founded the European Chinese Federation for Artificial Intelligence, where we lobby the interests of uh, European founders in the artificial intelligence space in China. Uh, and so my, my interest has always been at the intersection of language learning and artificial intelligence. And I created the first software uh, for a selfish need for me to help myself to, to learn Chinese. And of course, the software evolved over time. And now our software is used by you know, language uh, institutions, but also by individual um, independent uh, teachers that they would like to uh, go online and have a fully digital product that they can use in order to um, have online learning. So um, that I say like my, my main skill is uh, that to bring uh, like the, what is the, the new research in artificial intelligence in the hands of uh, uh, real uh, teachers, students, and school managers in order to deliver value. So today we're going to talk exactly about that, about like what are the new technologies that are emerging in the uh, artificial intelligence space and how we're going to uh, uh, take those uh, uh, innovative technology and actually create products that uh, are useful for you so you can use it in your daily life. And uh, I would like to start with this quote, uh, which is, uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. 
The quote is from uh, Arthur C. Clarke, which is a futurist and uh, sci-fi author and, and inventor. And I think this quote is very relevant for the topic today because uh, I believe that uh, uh, artificial intelligence at uh, this point in time got to a point that feels like magic. And uh, you can see all over the social media right now, people are posting about uh, like an interaction with ChatGPT, which is the latest uh, smart uh, chatbot from OpenAI, or people are posting about these um, images that are generated by artificial intelligence, and it looks like magic. Uh, and uh, I, I believe... Uh, so this quote is super relevant for this kind of technology. And I think uh, artificial intelligence is uh, very interesting and unique in a sense that uh, it looks like magic also for the people that build it, <laughs> you know, because uh, the technology itself is kind of like simple from a mathematical standpoint. The revolution is happening right now is based on a mathematical principle uh, and um, it's called deep learning. And uh, an architecture on top of deep learning is called the transformers, which is very simple. But once you put a lot of data and a lot of computation, this as an emergence of uh, intelligence, what we believe is intelligence. Uh, and this actually is very magical. Um, it's very magical uh, to, to all of us. So uh, today we're going to uh, see a little bit how this technology works because once, uh, if a technology is magical, sometimes it can be also scary uh, for some people. Um, so make us very like excited, but also sometimes scared because maybe we don't understand. Since it's something that looks like magic, we don't understand what's behind. So I hope at the end of this webinar, actually we can have a deeper understanding of how this technology works. And uh, and also we can understand uh, uh, correctly how we can uh, use it in our job as a language educators. So the agenda today is going to touch, actually, first of all, I will give a, a brief definition of what is generative AI, so we can have a better understanding of the technology itself. Then we're going to see how generative AI can be applied in the education industry. And at the end, we're going to have a case study on how uh, the Dugo AI, we're using generative AI in order to create a kind of a next generation of a learning management system that is specific for language learning. So let's start with some definitions. Um, I don't want to go too technical, uh, but I just, just uh, to give you like a brief understanding of what is generative AI. And generative AI is a branch of computer science uh, that, um, uses different kind of algorithms, right? And that uh, um, enables uh, the, these, uh, these algorithms to create a new content, right? And this content can be in the different kind of formats, can be audio, video, text, uh, or images. And this content is generated, is generated from actually a lot of content that the machine kind of ingested before. So for example, the GPT-3, which is the language model that empowers chat GPT, uh, has been trained all over the, uh, with all the text coming from all the internet. So it got a lot of data and then is using this kind of like uh, uh, what's called uh, compression. So it's compressing all this data and then you can use this system is decompressing and it's, then it seems like it's generating new language content. But actually what it's doing is just kind of like doing a search uh, what's called a semantic search all over this text is coming all over the internet. So that's a little bit how the system works. Of course, I cannot go uh, very technical in the explanation how the system works. For this reason, uh, I have a full webinar uh, that you can see here is uh, AI and NLP, Natural Language Pro uh, Processing for uh, Language Learning. So I created a webinar one year and a half ago that um, uh, I will ask George to send the link in the chat room in case you guys are interested where I go deeper into the explanation of how those uh, language models work and uh, specifically what are the implications for language educators. So if you want to go a little deeper on the technical side, I have a full webinar for that and I hope you guys enjoy and uh, going deeper on uh, how the technology works. But for today, the, what, the only thing you need to know is that these models are basically getting a lot of data and then they are compressing and then they are decompressing when you're called these language models in order to perform uh, intelligent tasks. So let me go to the next uh, slide. And here you can see that um, uh, these are kind of like a timeline. Uh, so uh, the timeline actually goes from pre-2020 till uh, 2030 <laughs> and uh, and then you have the different verticals which are the different kind of um, um, 
information that, that these language models can create. For example, you have text, you have code, also like uh, language models can be very good in generating like uh, code uh, and uh, images and also video, 3D and gaming. And you can see that uh, um, really like those models start to become very accurate uh, uh, in 2020 with the release of a model is called a GPT-3 from a company called OpenAI. And uh, from there, actually, we have, we have been witnessing um, very fast application of this technology in different verticals. And today, which is 20, 2022, almost 2023, we can see the emergence of a very um, interesting use cases. For example, in text, now you can have a chat GPT can generate a very uh, accurate uh, uh, blog uh, or like long text formats. In code as well, we have amazing application. For example, these uh, machines, we have a, a codex uh, uh, that can generate uh, actually like code, very accurate code, and also images. And But uh, in 2023, so next year, uh, we're going to see that those models will evolve. And um, especially in text, I think is a very interesting for uh, what is the topic today. We're going to see vertical fine tuning. What does it mean is that you have these general models that now can be used for uh, anything. So you can ask chat GPT whatever you want. You're going to have the fine tuning, which in technical terms means that you're going to make the model adapted to a specific use case. Uh, and those models will start to get a very high accuracy, right? And that, that what when that happens, actually that is going to be a explosion of applications. And what Adedugo we're doing is getting those language models and fine tuning them for the use case of language education. And uh, yeah, so today we're going to show you exactly how those models work because we already have a, a demo today of this technology. So we are extremely excited because it will be the first time uh, that we're going to show this demo uh, to the public. So it's an extremely exciting time. Um, so uh, what this will mean, actually having all these um, AI uh, application, like generative AI application, will mean that in the economic standpoint will be like a huge unlock of value. So this means that we can have the possibility to generate trillions of dollars of economic value. And this, um, if you want to learn more, there is an article from Sequoia Capital. Uh, that you can go and read, uh, where they actually explain why uh, generative AI will unlock a lot of value. And the main reason is because uh, it will increase the productivity of knowledge workers. So I believe all the people in this webinar today, we're all knowledge workers, and uh, AI has the possibility to increase our productivity. And uh, according to estimation of Sequoia Capital, they, they, they estimate there will be a 10% increase in productivity, which I believe is very conservative. Because as I will show you today, when you have uh, models that are very specific for a vertical, uh, in our case for language education, you can achieve even more than 10%, can be even like two or three times more productive, even 10 times more productive. So that has the possibility to generate a lot of value uh, and uh, a lot of productivity gains for the world. Uh, so we talk about the general uh, um, impact of generative AI, let's now go a little deeper into the uh, generative AI in education, which is the topic we are all interested in today. And uh, I believe the first uh, um, application of generative AI, um, I believe can be the key to unlock true personalized education. And um, I think we've, we've been discussing a lot over the years about uh, the implication of uh, artificial intelligence in education and uh, in the way that we can uh, create systems that adapt to the student, to each student. So that's what we call adaptive learning, right? So when you have a system that is learning from the student and then is changing according to the student needs. So over the years, we've been working a lot in adaptive learning. I believe what is happening right now with this new technology, we will have a new unlock of personalization where not only the system is optimizing for example, the activities that uh, the student is going through, through using algorithms. Now the system is generating content that is completely tailored for each single student. 
And that's, I, I believe, is a huge transformation because those new set of algorithms will allow you to generate word by word all the, the content that is completely custom made for each student. And this concept, I think, uh, goes around like the, this concept of student profile. So the student is interacting uh, in all the learning process across different places. For example, here we have a placement test. We can have like asynchronous content. We can have uh, like a live class. All these touch points that the student has with the system allow the system to collect data and then allow the system. Uh, and then allow the system to customize it. Sorry, can you unmute the audio? Giorgio, please assist me to unmute the audio. I'm so sorry about the, this uh, interruption. Okay, so let's move on. And uh, and then we can go, what are the challenges? So we, we know that um, right now, like. Generative AI can actually be used in order to unlock true personalization, but what are the uh, challenges? In order to create uh, a learning management system that really um, can uh, leverage the power of generative uh, artificial intelligence. And the problem is that uh, you will need to create a, a learning management system that uh, has this kind of generative engine at the core. And uh, um, I want to give you an example of a company uh, that's called Jasper.ai. And Jasper AI is a company that actually creates marketing uh, material. So if you want, for example, help to creating a LinkedIn post, you can do go to Jasper AI, and then you can give uh, uh, some uh, information about the topic, and then Jasper AI will create a LinkedIn post for you. And Jasper AI is a company that uh, managed to grow very quickly. Uh, already reached in one year, $1 billion valuation. And the way they did it is because in the marketing uh, environment, it's very simple because you just need to copy the text that Jasper AI creates and post it on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn uh, or all the other social media do the distribution for you. But if you want to integrate this kind of generative system for education, you need to have also like an integrated distribution system. So chat GPT right now, can easily create the content, like for example, reading activity, but then you need to give this reading activity to your students. And we know that uh, it's very important to have a learning management system that can support uh, the delivery of these kind of activities. And also we need to have a learning management system that will collect data for the students. So this kind of integrated system uh, needs to emerge. So I believe that now we will have uh, the emergence of a new breed of learning management system that will incorporate generative AI at the core. And today, actually, what we're going to show to you is uh, Edugo AI, which uh, we believe is uh, the first of its kind of uh, this kind of new generative AI LMS system where it incorporates generative uh, technology at the core. Uh, so. Generative AI in uh, Edugo AI. Um, so how that works. First of all, I would like to, um, to specify that what is our mission at Edugo AI? Because uh, sometimes uh, when we talk about uh, this kind of like uh, technologies, uh, we can have uh, polarizing feelings. Some people can get very excited. Some people get, get very scared, right? Because especially like language teachers might think they will lose their job. And, and so like, uh, it's very important that we specify what is our intention when we use this kind of technologies. And we use AI to amplify, extend and scale the human interaction at the core of language learning. Okay. So it's very important that we don't say we use AI to substitute or to the human interaction at the, at the core of language learning or to eliminate the human interaction at the core of language learning. We want to amplify, extend and scale the human interaction at the core of language learning. And the reason is very simple. is because we believe that uh, language is a technology that uh, needs to be used in order to communicate. Language uh, is a very human thing in the sense that uh, as a emerged from humans, for the need to coordinate in complex uh, uh, social structures. And I believe that we need to keep using language in order to communicate with other humans. Otherwise we kind of like lose the meaning of language. And that's the reason why we want to keep the human interaction 
uh, and we just want to use the AI to amplify it and scale it. So now I just want to show you some example on how we do it. So we, we kind of divide our product in those three verticals. So, and especially when we talk about the human interaction, we talk about the interaction that is between teachers and students, which is the core human interaction when you learn uh, So at the core of the education process. So the first is uh, uh, we use AI to amplify the interaction between teachers and students. What we mean by that? Well, let me, uh, let me show you with a demo of the technology. Sorry, I need to exit the presentation. I'm not sure why. Okay. So what we mean by uh, the uh, amplification of the human interaction. This is our uh, platform, this EduGo AI dashboard. And it's actually like for the one of you already are used to EduGo, this is actually the new, a new interface that we developed uh, specifically for the generative uh, component of our software. And um, what you can see here on the left um, is our like a content creator dashboard. So this is the dashboard that you can use in order to create content. And uh, the first parameters you need to select is the target language and the translation language. In this case, I will have uh, um, target language in, uh, English, translation language I will teach to Italian students as an example. And here, uh, the second parameter is lesson type. Here I can have different lesson types. So I can decide to create a different kind of language content, right? So can I have an article, can be words. Uh, so teach vocabulary or I can teach uh, sentences. So for the first example, I will show you like uh, how our system works with sentences. The third parameter is the lesson level. This is, is based on the common European framework. So um, we use the common European framework because it's one of the most used framework to teach languages. But of course our system uh, in the future will be also adapted to other kind of linguistic framework for uh, uh, language uh, teaching. Uh, for example, for each level of common European framework, for example, in this case, we have a grammar, right? So we kind of like decompose the common European framework and then we selected all the different skills, right? So we did that decomposition of uh, A1 level and then we have all the grammar points. For example, there is and there are, preposition of time, simple present tense and so on and so forth. So what I can do here, I can select one of those grammar points and then here I can uh, select a topic. So here it can be, uh, so I have the grammar point, I have the level, I have the language. Now I can decide like a topic of a lesson that I would like to generate to teach this specific grammar point. And this, the topic can be anything really. Um, I don't know if you guys, maybe you want to give me some suggestions of topic I can write down. Christmas, okay, <laughs> okay. Let, let... Oh, UFO. Okay, UFO is also interesting. Um, okay, I, I will go for the Christmas. Um, maybe I can go even more specific. Uh, go Christmas in Italy. Right now I come back. So the, the, just to show you, like it, this can go like very deep in, in terms of a customization of the content you can generate. So I wrote Christmas in Italy and then I just click generate sentences. And uh, now what the AI is doing is basically creating sentences that are based on that specific grammar point at a specific level with that specific topic. And uh, it just take a few seconds to, to generate. Okay. And uh, then here you can see that the system already generated sentences. There is a big Christmas tree in the center of the town. Okay. Uh, so right to Christmas. And the grammar is very important that there is, there is uh, as well, like the system is um, um, translating in Italian because I specify Italian as translation language. I can change it. I can also remove translation language if I want. And then the system is also identifying the keywords that are specific for the grammar structure. I can also select pictures, right? So here there are, There are two nativity scenes. Okay, nativity scenes so means like for the Christmas. Uh, so I mean, here you can also like teach specific ground, uh, vocabulary that for this topic. 
it's quite impressive actually the the the, the, the kind of accuracy of the vocabulary based on the topic that we selected. And actually, in, I have to say that these nativity scenes in Italy is very common. So it's part of the, 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 the Italian tradition for Christmas because I specify Christmas in Italy. So the system has also like a deep understanding of the culture of what you specify and so on and so forth. So the, the, there are actually uh, all these sentences have been created by the system. And then the next step is uh, to click on generate activities. So now what the system is doing is it's taking this linguistic content that we generated by AI and then it's using other AI algorithms in order to generate uh, lessons with all the different activities in order to teach the specific grammar points. And that also takes uh, like a few seconds to generate. And, um, and then, so, okay, I can see, okay, the system already generated all these activities. And here actually, like we can see already, the, the system is explaining the grammar, the reason there are, uh, and then also like explain me like the grammar point. Okay, there is a book, there is a book, there is a book on the chair. So like is kind of explain this specific structure of the grammar. So you can see there is plus one thing plus a place. And then it's going also like explain there are as a, uh, as a grammar. Of course, and then explain me also what is the difference between there is and there are. And then uh, is uh, also going to the um, to the creation of um, different kind of activities uh, based on the sentences that this time I insert in, inside the, the the lesson. And here you can see now is testing the student uh, ability. Um, to uh to learn this grammar point okay and of course i can go on uh with all the uh lesson so this actually is generating all the different activities to teach the specific grammar point uh, with the sentences specific for the topic that we specified and, and generating different variation of activities for example here is uh you need to say what is wrong if it's wrong or is right and so on and so forth and that's it. So you have the summary, and then you have the, at the end, you have the results. You can see the activities that you completed, and you can see also the leaderboard. So it's very actually complete as a learning experience specific to the language that we uh, told to the system. And this actually, we call it is a way to uh, amplify the teacher. So the teacher before actually has this idea generating, uh, you know, this grammar point with this topic, needs to spend a lot of time in this way, actually, like we amplify the power of teachers by giving uh, this automated uh, content generation. And here we have, um, of course, this is a structure created by the AI system. And uh, you as an educator and content creator, you can go here and you can modify the structure. You can do many, many things uh, in order to customize uh, the kind of activities that has been created. So here is actually like all the list of activities that have been generated and we have a huge set of other activities that, that you can add uh, with a drag and drop into the phrase. That's it. So this is actually the, the first uh, grammar lesson we created very easily. Then you can copy the link and share it and you will be able to enjoy uh, this lesson. The second uh, uh, template I would like to share with you, which uh, we believe is also like um, a very impressive um, use of a chat uh, of GPT-3 is actually on the article side. And this time we can go in a higher level student. So instead of having like a A1, maybe like now we can select like a C1 and uh, we can generate a, a, a reading comprehension um, article plus questions. So maybe you guys can tell me a C1 topic or something very specific we can uh, make our AI system generate. If you have uh, any idea, okay, civil law, okay. Uh, okay, uh, okay, Jeremy, I like civil law. Uh, <laughs> Coach Karin is again, UFO. <laughs> Okay, I, I will try to go with UFO, maybe it might be a little bit, okay, maybe we can merge the two. We can go very creative. Uh, okay, Akbar is a write an essay about FIFA. Uh, if I, 
autonomous vehicle, China policy, manipulation. Wow. Okay. You guys have, uh, you are very creative, I have to say, <laughs> about the topic. Um, okay. I, I will just pick one. Um, uh, okay. So maybe you can. Um, I, I like actually the one of China policy uh, because it's also a topic that is very interesting to me. I've been following what's going on in China right now. Uh, China policy U-turn on COVID protocols during Christmas season. So, which is ac actually super uh, relevant topic for today is like, um, so we can just put the topic here, select the level C1. And now um, we fine tune our model based on the common European framework. So what this means is that our system understands the different level of the common European framework because we created the uh, model that has been fine-tuned with the grammar and the other language coming from the Common European Framework. So the language you can find here has been uh, graded, uh, what's called a graded reader, right? Like uh, when you actually have um, the level that is uh, uh, the fits of the Common European Level Framework. And here you can see already the, the system generated a title. So celebrating the Christmas season safely, well, that's the title of the article that the system generated and fix it. And then here, what you can see is that you have the article, um, which I don't have the time to read all the article. If you want, uh, guys, then I can share the article with you. We can go deeper and analyze, uh, but you can see that uh, it's quite accurate at the first uh, glance. So Chinese government has made a dramatic U-turn in its COVID protocol for Christmas season. The worst is decision to ban large gatherings of people. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Actually, that's exactly what's going on in China right now. And so if the, the content of the article is good, uh, then I can just press submit. And what our system now is doing is extracting the keywords from the article. And um, we have uh, created an AI algorithm that understands the level of the common European framework and also understands which words needs to be extracted from the article. And uh, you can see here, actually, he extracted quite a lot of words. So then very easily you can go, oh, wow, okay. It, go, it, it went very crazy this time. Uh, so you can go and see the words that has been selected if they are uh, accurate for the level. I can see, for example, some words are not that accurate in this case, um, but uh, yeah, that's why we need to, this is still a beta and we need to fine tune the model, but usually the, the, the words extracted are kind of good. Um, so the, you can do some cleanup and remove words uh, from this list because it's not uh, it's not important for the student to focus on all those keywords. Uh, so after a little bit of cleanup, I can have uh, actually like um, some uh, words that I select and then that's it. I have uh, the text, I have the keywords, I can press generate activities. And now the system will follow again a pedagogical structure in order to teach reading comprehension. So we'll generate a set of activities based on the context of the text that we input and then generate activities. I will take just a few seconds. So the AI is uh, generating like uh, reading comprehension and uh, other kind of activities also based on the keywords. And then you can see the outcome. Okay. The, this is the interface again from the student and uh, you can see that there is the article important is that uh, this is for italian students remember these are the, the 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 kind of like uh, settings that we decided so you can uh, uh, click on words and uh, you can have a definition of the word in italian so students can actually learn uh, these different vocabulary reverse reverse and then um, what uh, is the second activity is actually like a reading comprehension. So from the text, our AI system is able to uh, create a set of uh, reading comprehension questions. So why did uh, the Chinese government initially ban large gatherings and close uh, entertainment venues? And, and then here actually, uh, you can select the right option. Of course, I will need to read the article, but it seems like this is the right option. The other options are plausible options. Uh, so to follow public's need, to prevent people from celebrating, 
So we, we train the model in order to create what's called destructors. Destructors are, uh, you know, options that uh, might confuse the destruct, confuse the, the student. Uh, and so in this way, you can really test the knowledge of the student. Uh, okay, so I just randomly select. I can see the first one was correct, actually. Um, and then we have other kind of reading comprehension. Uh, and this way, actually, this one is uh, for uh, true or false. And uh, this one is a summary that then I need to put the key points in the right order, also to understand if the students understand the gist of the uh, article. And then we will have also uh, fill in the blank based on the keywords that we extracted from the article. Um, and here, the last one is about the uh, you know, linking the words with the right definition. Uh, and this way, we can make sure also that the, 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 the students are learning the right vocabulary. And that's it. So that's uh, and then you, at the end, you have the wrap up. Of course, you can see the uh, results and also you can see the leaderboard, which would be zero point for me because I did just one wrong. <laughs> but of course, if you, in case you do correct, then you have points to show in the leaderboard. Um, and that's, uh, again, I can take this lesson and then I can share it on uh, with my students. But easy, I have a link of the lesson. I can copy and paste. Maybe I can copy and paste to you guys in the chat if you want to go and test it out. Um, yeah, you can play with this. Uh, you can test the technology by yourself. You can learn uh, some English <laughs> from, from this lesson we just created. Um, so it's very easy then to share. So I just want to go back quickly in the presentation, and then I want to show you the second point of uh, our mission, uh, which is actually like uh, we show how we can amplify the impact of uh, teachers. Now we want to show how we can extend. And extend is another interesting uh, word because extension in this case means that we will be able to, um, to have the teacher interaction that is, a, is a available also when the students uh, uh, are not there. So the extension in this case means if I am a teacher, I'm doing my work and I'm putting a lot of effort and time, how can my impact uh, in terms of like uh, the learning impact that I have for my students extend even when I'm sleeping, even when I'm not there. And uh, for this, actually, we created a very interesting technology, um, which is uh, this time uh, supporting the synchronous uh, part of the platform, uh, which is actually the live lesson. And uh, uh, our live lessons, the way it works is that you can have a video call in our system, and then um, the video call is recorded. So this is an example of a live lesson between uh, Rebecca and Nicole as a demo, of course. Um, and here you can see, okay, this, uh, this is actually like the recording of the uh, live lesson. And the AI is able to extract some of the keywords uh, from the live lessons. But let me, let me show you how this is done. So basically the AI is extracting a fragment of the recording. So here you can see these are fragment of the recording when the teacher is pronouncing a specific sentence. Okay, so the teacher is recording this during the, the live session. And then we have these sentences that have been extracted and then we have a set of activities that has been created based on the content of the live lesson. So here the students can go and learn a uh, different kind of uh, skills based on the content that's been created from the live lessons. And uh, very interesting to see that, for example, the student can play back what the teacher said during the class, take on words, understand what is the definition, and then practice pronunciation, for example, to get tough feedback. This we call it a teacher extension because the teacher is not there physically, but the students can continue to learn from the teacher because the AI is a kind of extending the power of the teacher. And this can be done, of course, in this kind of a generation, uh, thanks to a generative system like the one where we have in Edugo. And um, another example of teacher extension is also the assessment. So every time that the student is interacting with this kind of content, the system is collecting uh, information about the, what has been the performance and then is reporting this to teachers. So 
there, there is an auto extension from the assessment standpoint. And the last point I want to talk is about the scale, the scale part, which I believe is also very, very uh, relevant, which is once I have the system um, implemented where I can generate content, I can extend my uh, power as a teacher, then what I can do um, using the same system, I can go, for example, uh, creating a course, I can package the course very easily. Like uh, I can import the content, uh, for example, uh, celebrating Christmas, um, I can also add the video lessons if I want inside the this course, and then very easily I can package that as a, like with a price. Can I put ten dollars, and then I can generate a sales page. So in this way, actually, I can distribute this content to students all around the world. And this actually, the technology helped me as an educator to extend and scale my power because now I have a scalable system. I can get much more students compared to what before when I have to actually go and do all these live lessons by myself. So th these are the, uh, this, the page uh, is being generated where now I can sell my course and so make money from the system. Um, that's uh, a little bit uh, the demo of the platform. Of course, then if you have questions, uh, we can go back and show you some other parts. I would just uh, would like to wrap up now the um, the webinar before we open up for the Q&A. Uh, I would like to show you this framework. Uh, and I think it's an uh, uh, interesting framework, uh, especially for the people that believe that AI, it can be a threat to their job as uh, language educators. And uh, I created this framework, uh, taking inspiration from uh, the autonomous driving framework. Um, so I don't know if you guys uh, are familiar with the concept of autonomous driving, which means that uh, companies like Tesla, um, they are creating uh, systems where they can uh, automate the job of drivers. Um, and they do that thanks to artificial intelligence, of course, and thanks to all the data that, that their fleet of cars collect by going around. Um, I took the, the same framework that they use and I changed it and applied uh, in, in the uh, education industry because I, I think there are a lot of analogies uh, and a lot of lessons we can learn from it. And so I created what's called the six levels of autonomous teaching. And I created this framework almost two years ago. The way the framework works is that you go from level zero autonomy, which is the traditional classroom where all the interactions with the students are performed by the teacher. So you just have a, a simple technology uh, and static technology such as uh, paper textbooks, PDF, PowerPoints. And then you start to automate, you start to introduce technology uh, in, uh, in the classroom. And as you introduce technology in the classroom, you start to automate more and more what is the, uh, the your job as a teacher? And so the technology starts to take some responsibilities, some tasks that usually you have to do it as a teacher, now technology can do it. So it starts to automate some tasks. And so, for example, uh, the first uh, example of this is that you start to introduce uh, digital textbooks and uh, tools like Kahoot, Quizlet. And so now the content, it's truly standardized because the textbook is always the same, uh, but now it's interactive. So now there is a uh, little games, there is a, uh, you know, some uh, little uh, quits. So the, the content becomes a little more interactive. And then you start to get a little more personalized. And, and that's the example of what we show with uh, EduGo, for example, that the system is personalizing the content, for example, after a video call, right? So you do a video call, then you have a personalized content. The third level is that you have uh, adaptive systems. So now the system not only is personalizing the content, but is also adapting so that there is some kind of like machine learning behind the scenes that is adapting to the student needs based on the mistakes the student is making. And then we have level four. Level four autonomy is actually mm, an interesting uh, stage because this is when you have uh, generative, generative systems where actually not only the system is adapting, the system in now is creating content. Uh, so it's been creative in the uh, generation of content that is a fit for that student need. And uh, in, in this case, uh, we believe that uh, we are getting close to this stage, 
right? Um, me that I've been observing for the past five years, the evolution of artificial intelligence in this industry, I can start to see that the, this latest technology can start to automate a lot of the teacher tasks. But it's very important that I say that uh, the teaching element uh, is uh, one component of the job of a teacher. So I believe that in, um, in the future, we're going to be able to automate the teaching task. That I believe AI will get to a point that will get better and faster and cheaper than the humans in order to deliver pedagogical content. What I think is going to happen at that point is that the, our job will change. We will need to adapt to this new reality. And what is going to be extremely important at that point is going to be the human connection that will emerge. What does it mean, the human connection? Is that I can have the best AI in the world that uh, can uh, teach to me all the, the grammar or uh, like syntax even uh, like uh, the, the cultural norms of the language, I think we are going to get also that level of, uh, you know, um, understanding with the pragmatics. And there is a very interesting uh, paper that just came out about pragmatics with models like GPT-3. So I think we are going to get there. So language models will start to understand also what are the cultural norms of a language. But what is... Um, very important to understand is that it's not just about the pedagogical element. A language educator has also other components, for example, like creating a community, creating a human relationship with his students, uh, communicating their personality to the students, and make the students feel emotionally safe. And all those things are impossible to automate with the artificial intelligence. So I think that this kind of technology actually will unlock a lot of value because the market for uh, people that want to have access to education is huge and is underserved. There are billions of people that right now they don't have access to education. So it's important that we build those tools in order to lower the cost and increase the quality in order to get really democratize education for the world. And uh, we as educators, we will need to understand how this uh, technology works in the way that we can leverage these technologies in order to amplify, extend the scale, our impact and create value for all those students that right now that don't have access. So that's just my final thought. And uh, of course, these are, um, these are future we need to build together. And so we will need to drive this technology towards that kind of future, as opposed to a future where just humans interact with machines that we don't have any more human touch in our interactions. So I think it's very important that we have this kind of discussions like today, where we understand the power of this technology, but also we work together in order to create a future that is worth living for the next generations. So thank you so much for, uh, for uh, staying with us till the end of the webinar. Now I would like to open up to the Q&A or discussions Actually, I just saw in the chat room that we have a lot of people that have been discussing already. So I'm sorry I didn't have the focus to, to check what's going on in the chat. But if you guys want to have uh, some, um, you know, if you have some questions, uh, I would like to interact with you guys. Uh, okay, I can see Luke is uh, asking, thank you, Giuseppe. Are there any instances you know uh, you know, of where AI has been integrated with the XR, VR learning experiences? This is a very interesting um, topic. I actually was talking with the founder of uh, a VR company in Abu Dhabi last week, and uh, they are looking to integrating uh, these kind of generative models uh, into the generation of virtual environments. I, I actually uh, show you in my uh, presentation um, as one of the uh, one of the first slides, actually, uh, th there is actually what will happen next. And you have um, the the last uh, um, um, line is a video 3D and gaming. This actually includes also this kind of like 3D environment or virtual environment like VR. And uh, I think we are going to get there, but uh, still the computation uh, of these language models is not good enough to get at that point. It's very important that uh, there will be a next uh, generation of language model. So right now, the, the model that we have uh, uh, from OpenAI and also the model we're using is called GPT-3. So the third iteration of GPT model. 
early 2023, we are going to have GPT-4. And GPT-4 will be a multimodal model. What does it mean? <laughs> multimodal means that uh, um, can uh, from text can generate, uh, for example, like a video or uh, from video can generate text. So it can very easily switch between modalities. And, uh, and so on that point, I believe that we're going to see uh, this kind of applications also in the creation of uh, virtual environments. Uh, according to this uh, graph, which is actually from Sequoia Capital, they have this uh, from 2030. So video games and movies are personalized dreams, which is kind of like interesting. Uh, so we have like AI that creates personalized environment, uh, kind of like a dream for uh, uh, completely custom made. So I think it's very exciting. Uh, I don't know if I answered to your question though. Uh, Okay. Okay. So Akbar is asking, uh, thank you. Is there any progress in Arabic languages based content generation? Okay. Uh, thank you for the question, Akbar. Uh, I've been uh, playing with Arabic quite a little bit because now I start to learn Arabic since uh, I recently moved to Dubai. And <laughs> Arabic is a tricky language uh, because uh, is. Um, you have many dialects, so there is not like a really official language as Arabic. So each country speaks different kind of Arabic versions. And that is kind of like a little difficult in terms to build like a very robust uh, uh, language models. However, um, I think from the written form, we can achieve something uh, remarkable. I already saw like GPT-3 um, doing generating some uh, lessons for myself in Arabic. And uh, I, I believe that uh, we are going to get there. However, like for speech recognition and other parts, I think is a little bit trickier. We will need to collect more data. So um, I, I hope soon to have a demo. So Akbar, if you want to then to stay in touch, I can demo to you something about Arabic. Uh, Rosie Tanner is asking, can you avoid translation uh, example, uh, explanation instead of translations? Yes, uh, we can avoid translation. Uh, so that's one of the parameters that you can set up. Um, sorry, I will share again my screen. Uh, so if you go again in our content editor, uh, you can see, um, go back to the lesson creation. You have actually like uh, the, the first parameters that you need to select. Um, for example, I can select your sentences. And here I can decide to translate to Italian or I can decide no translation. In, the, in this case, what it means is that uh, the, the sentences will be generated without any translation. So would be basically like direct method uh, of teaching. So just target language without any uh, translation language. Um, okay. Uh, can, very useful, it would be fascinating to see the future development appearing, absolutely. It's amazing how fast this is changing. And I can tell you that <laughs> we've been building super quickly right now because we already have all the infrastructure created over many years. And now with this new technology applied to our existing infrastructure, we can make very fast progress. And I think many companies as well will start to make amazing progress. And I think we are riding an exponential curve right now. So we are just at the base of this exponential progress. And we're going to see a lot of progress happen very, very quickly. So I'm very excited also to keep you involved. Uh, we're going to have other webinars because uh, I'm sure that in the next versions of uh, EduGo, we're going to have a, a other uh, applications I would like to share to you. Um, Luke, wow, thank you. Thank you to you, Luke, to attend this webinar. Kati, uh, could you share the presentation so we can access the link, please? Thank you. Of course, Kati, we were going to send you an email um, as a follow-up. There will be the presentation link and as well the recording of this webinar. So the webinar will be recorded on YouTube and we're going to share with you the recording. Giuseppe, do you happen to have a recording of this webinar? Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, that will be available in our YouTube channel. Maybe, Giorgio, you can share our YouTube uh, channel link so you guys can subscribe to our channel so you can get notified once the recording is uploaded. Steve, I agree that the teachers are going to have uh, to think to ways, uh, of ways of encouraging human interaction in the future. Your table may suggest more autonomous learning with greater use of automation, but it concerns me uh, that not a lot of, of this teaching struck me as a learner-centric. 
centered. Besides, I just hope that teachers use AI technology sensibly and don't let students fall into the trap of not thinking anymore. Still impressive technology, and I can see that it will speed up some teachers' tasks. Yes, th this actually is a tricky, uh, how do you balance the use of um, artificial intelligence together with uh, the um, student uh, progress? And uh, it is tricky uh, to overuse uh, this kind of technology. Uh, for example, I've been playing a lot with ChatGPT lately, even if when I have to create an email or I need to create a blog, and it seems like I don't want anymore to formulate this kind of uh, text by myself. I just write there and just copy paste, right? So that's true, and that's a risk of automation. However, I believe that the kind of skills that are necessary in this AI world will evolve and change. I think that the kind of skill of the future um, it will be in order to how do you communicate with those machines? First of all, like I think we will need to educate students on how to leverage those kind of tools to accomplish their goals. Um, and so like the kind of education system will have to shift a little bit in order to take these tools in consideration. And, and so that there is a new field that is emerging now that's called prompt engineering, which is basically how do you create a prompt to make the system do whatever you want them to do. And the second thing is like, even if the system is giving you some information, you need to evaluate the information that the system gave to you is good or not, because those systems are not all the time accurate. And this can be very dangerous actually, because if you become overconfident in the accuracy of those systems, then uh, those systems can become very dangerous. And so we will need to educate the new generation in order to uh, assess what is the outcome of the system generation, uh, what they generate. Been reading uh, about the GPT engine, just making up answers to specific questions like when did you the first giraffe land on the moon? It gives a date, your comments. Deborah, um, thank you for this. Actually, that, that's exactly connected to the, my previous point, which is actually those system is just language models. So what they do is just based on the prompt they that you put in the system, they will generate the next words. <laughs> right so you can actually like prompt the system to tell you whatever like when uh, giraffe land on the moon and the system will have to create the plausible sound answers because that's how the systems are trained so it's not a fault of the system is uh, is basically like you need to be very careful in the way that you are prompting the system those are just statistical models so we don't need to think of those as like intelligent agents that they will need to be careful. We need, we as humans are intelligent. Those systems are just like a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, algorithms and mathematics and then is outputting text. That's what the, they are under the hood. So you need to be careful <laughs> in the way you're using them. So I think education again, you know, use those models is very important. Um, Okay, Akbar, we are in Hargaham working uh, something internally. So let's connect. Yeah, of course, uh, Akbar, let's follow up. Uh, you can send me a message. We can see if uh, there is some synergies. Coach Karin, I use AI just like Jasper. And you, I, I do have to double check facts. Exactly. So Jasper uh, is uh, the AI I was mentioning before, like for uh, helping people to create uh, compelling marketing messages still using the same systems is uh, is uh, exactly the same models and therefore you need to be very careful on what is the output is there going to uh, matt is asking is there going to be an api available right now we don't have apis for these models uh, but we're going to have uh, uh, sdks in the way that you can integrate with the existing platforms if you have a specific use case we can talk about mm. mara May thanks, Giuseppe is amazing. Do you have a tutorials uh, that show how to use the functions of the platform? Yes, we're going to create uh, tutorials. Actually, it's very important for me to say that we are going to open up a beta uh, of this uh, technology. So this technology is not available in the base to go plan. Is a, a new technology we are introducing in a beta version. So if you guys want to have access to this, I will ask Giorgio to share the link in the chat. Uh, you can sign up in the form, and then in the next few weeks, we're going to give you access to the same tool I show you today, and you can play it for free. 
So there's not going to be any charge for that, but because it's a beta version, we want to get feedback from you guys. So if you're interested in uh, testing the technology and provide feedback to us in order to improve these kind of systems and also keep the conversation going, uh, we encourage you to sign up for the beta version. You can play with it, tell us what you think, and we, together we can actually improve the system. So I will ask Giorgio again to share the uh, link in the chat. Akira, let's go. No more Notion templates to generate course uh, content. Yes, Kira. Um, I hope uh, this new technology gets you excited because I, I know like you've been creating content in Edugo and uh, I hope in this way you can speed up a lot the content creation process. Also regarding uh, generation of courses, actually uh, we are also working on the creation of templates for full courses. So instead of creating each single lesson, one by one, you can generate a full course uh, using the same technology. Okay. So I can see Giorgio shared the link in the, in the chat. So if you want, please um, sign up. Sara Porreca, is there any other parameters for a um, uh, common European framework levels except grammar? Yes, we have also linguistic functions. Um, we don't we didn't implement for this demo today, but it's something that we already have uh, available in uh, our like um, development environment. So we also develop similar system for uh, linguistic functions of common European framework. Um, so if you want, then uh, also in the demo, I think like in the beta version, you're going to be able to have also linguistic functions. And of course, we're, we are happy to get feedback. We're designing this kind of system. There is not a playbook for how the system should be built because it's a new kind of uh, model where you use like a common European framework and then you build the AI services on top of that. So if you guys have suggestions on how you think you will use these models, please let us know because we are also exploring the design space on how to build this kind of systems. Uh, Victoria, Giuseppe, I'm testing the platform, but my interface doesn't look like yours. So is there an option generating the content? Victoria, absolutely. This is the reason why um, we have the beta group. So I will suggest you to sign up with the beta because the GPT-3 version of our platform right now is not available in the base uh, Dugo uh, interface. And uh, so if you want to test also this version, apply for the beta and we are able to, to update your platform. Uh, Rosie, very interesting and hard thing. Uh, we need to change roles when Google arrived. Similarly with AI, keep, up, keep us on our toes. Absolutely. When Google arrived, also people were completely like, afraid uh, that because now all the information is available to everyone. Uh, and so like a, a lot of jobs will change, uh, will disappear, like the job of a librarian, right? Like uh, will, will completely disappear, which is true. Uh, that job of librarian probably like um, is not popular as it was before Google, but uh, I mean, uh, Google has created so much value for the world that we don't want to go back to go to libraries to search for uh, books, right? And now we have Google and we get used to it, it's creating so much more value. I think the same analogy can be drawn for this kind of new AI systems and for education system. Uh, Jeremy Lane, um, hello Jeremy. Uh, the more the students are exposed to the language, the more uh, they use it and the more con contact points they have with it, the better. It can make them not think. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I guess it was uh, Jeremy. You referred to the previous uh, comment. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And being exposed, especially like exposing students uh, uh, the right level of the language, right, right, following the scaffolding technique. I think that's very important, especially like with this graded the system we have now with the different levels. We want to expose students exactly with the right level of the language in a way that they can improve. Um, Okay, um, I can see you guys are <laughs> writing a lot of uh, messages. I I think we're already over one hour of the webinar. So I, I just want to respect everyone's time and uh, try to wrap up. And uh, of course, if you have uh, more discussions and more questions so we can follow up, I'm available on LinkedIn. You can text me directly. You can text also other people in the team. 
and um, we are very encouraging you. We are very looking forward to see you in the beta test. So I think that will be the best way to for you guys to understand the power of this technology and having a, a more in-depth discussion on how you can use it uh, to create a better uh, future for uh, all the world, creating better, better education systems. And so thank you again. And uh, yeah, it was very exciting. And I'm very pumped because I see a lot of interaction from you guys. It means that uh, you guys appreciate as much as we do the power of this technology. So I hope to see you soon. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye.